Hey, hello and welcome to this video. First of all, apologies for the shadow. I'm down a lighting kit and Amazon are severely messing me around with sending me a new one. More on that in my uh, Festivity 365 Authors Day video, which I've just recorded, if you're interested. You're probably not, because why would you be if you're not me? What's this video about again? Oh yeah, Stranger Things. Season 2 has been out just over a week and a bit now, so have you watched it? Have you watched all of it? Did you binge it? Did you binge it in one day? I did. I'm, I'm only on episode 2. But that does mean there are no spoilers in this video, so well done. You don't have to worry about spoilers. I probably won't even have spoilers for season 1, I don't think. That's because this video is all about books, and not Stranger Things books, but books you might like if you like Stranger Things. In researching this video, I typed in 1980s horror story novels. Something like that. It was something like horror stories set in the 1980s. Something something along those lines. I can't remember the exact wording I used. But basically, it came up with a lot of Stephen King books. Yeah, it's pretty much got a, like a monopoly on that genre of 1980s set horror stuff. Well, not a complete monopoly, but there's a lot of Stephen King. So I'm not going to include too much here because that would be silly. I don't want a whole video of just Stephen King recommendations. But we should probably start with one. And okay, let's get the obvious one out of the way. It. Group of children encountering monsters from another dimension. I mean, how much more Stranger Things can you get? And some of it is set in the 1980s, although admittedly not the bit where they're kids. The bit where they're adults is set in the 1980s, the bit where they're kids is set in the 1950s, but period period settings as well so there's that it is a very dark horror story which i read when i was about 11 i think i read it on holiday uh lovely holiday reading when you're sitting by the pool that is uh, but oh yeah i read it when i was 11 i don't recall having nightmares about it i never i never really was scared of clowns uh but uh but it was very chilling let's say that it was very chilling and it is a classic and I would definitely recommend it to any horror fans. Um, and if you, you know, it's one of Stephen King's greatest works as such. The ones, one of the ones he's really well known for. So uh, it definitely, be, if, you, if you're a fan of Stranger Things, definitely check this one out. Oh, and for a while, um, after this was my first ever Stephen King book I read. I went through a phase of reading like exclusive for about a year. I just read exclusively Stephen King books back to back. I and then I haven't really read one in about 10 15 years since. So um uh yeah, that's uh that I, it's obviously it was good enough to get me hooked on Stephen King for a while. So yeah, this is a good one to start with and it's you know, it's the one that Stranger Things often gets compared to. So I you had to get that one out of the way first. For the second choice of book, if you like Stranger Things, how about Let the Right One In? Now this is one I haven't read, and until I started researching this list, I didn't actually know that it is indeed set in the 1980s. Mark one for similarities. And the similarities don't end there. Dead teenage boy, a monster attacking people, and a new mysterious girl in town. There you go. That's like four similarities right there. Paper Girls is the next one on the list, not a novel, but a graphic novel. Halloween, 1988. Already similarities, 80s. Halloween, which is when season two of Stranger Things is set. A group of 12 year old girls discover an alien invasion in their small American town. I think you can see the similarities there. It just happens to be a group of 12 year old girls instead of 10, 11 year old boys. And I think it's a bigger group. And they're paper girls. Which does mean they ride bikes as well. Or what about Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. Ray Bradbury is a very famous American sci-fi and fantasy author um, and this is, well, let's just, I'm going to read the synopsis of this to, to give you an idea of why it might be similar. When a creepy carnival rolls into their sleepy Illinois town, two teenage boys set out to investigate. So you've got small town, creepy newcomers, teenage boys. And Ray Bradbury is one of those classic authors you probably should read at some point if you like sci-fi and fantasy. He's like one of the staples of the genre. So maybe check him out. That shadow is really annoying me. And here's a final suggestion for you. Disappearance at Devil's Gate. By Paul Tremblay. I will once again 
go to the synopsis. Late one summer night, Elizabeth Sanderson receives the devastating news that every mother fears. Her 13-year-old son, Tommy, has vanished without a trace into the woods of the local park. The main plot of season one of Stranger Things was the disappearance of one of the boys from the group um, and his very distraught mother getting more distraught trying to find him. So you can see the similarities there. In this story, there are the towns people start to see uh, mysterious creatures, shadowy things, um, and uh, there's, there's clearly something uh, supernaturally going on as well. So there you go. That's another one you might want to check out if you're a fan of Stranger Things. Do you know any other novels or stories or graphic novels or anything that fans of Stranger Things might enjoy? If you do, let us know in the comments below and let me know if you've read any of these books and what you think of them as well. Thank you very much. I will be back for more book and TV related videos soon. So please do hit that subscribe button, hit that like button if you like this video and all that jazz. And I will hopefully see you again soon with hopefully, fingers crossed, better lighting. That's not better lighting.